Hello everyone, welcome to Memory Mixer Design Studio. Today in this tutorial we're going to be talking about adding and using shapes. You can find the shapes in the tool drawer along the side. You can click on it, you see your different options. There's also a shortcut found along the top. As I looked to see how people were using their shapes, I realized this is probably going to be more than one tutorial. Today we're going to cover how to double mount a photo, adding a journaling box, and creating solid strips of paper or stripes, and how to apply a tint to a photo. Once you have your shapes tool drawer open, you can see all the different features that are available. To add a shape, just simply click here, add a shape and then you see square, rectangle, all the different shapes that are available to add to your layout. On this particular layout, we have used a square or a rectangle. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to proceed to the next page here, and we can do that. So I just simply added my square rectangle, and now I want to change the color. I'm going to match the color um, from the first page. So I'll just come here, click on that brown, say OK, and now I have my first rectangle done. I want to give it that double matted, so I'm going to go ahead and add another shape, square rectangle again. I'm going to position it over, and you see I'm just using that wire outline to kind of position it over so I get my sizing and placement right. And that looks pretty close. Might be able to make it a little bit wider and maybe just a little bit narrower at the top. And now I'm going to match that same color because I just really wanted to feel like it had a black outline in it. I'm going to come here, I'm going to match the same color, say OK. But now what I'm going to do is add a mat. So I'll come here, change the thickness of the mat. I'm going to go ahead and go for black, say OK. It's created an outline that's going around my title. So if we come back here to the first page now, you'll be able to see how that outline looks and then just add your title. Probably one of the most popular questions we have asked at Memory Mixer is, can you double mat a photo? And yes, you can, and adding a shape is probably the easiest way to do that. So let's come over here to my next sample. And this is the cutest quick mix. It is from the Edson Company by Fayette. And I've got an example of a photo here that's been double matted. So let's come over to the next page now and I'll show you how we did that. It really is so easy to double mat a photo. Simply click on your photo box, add a mat, and then here I can change the width of the mat, so maybe we'll make this one a 6, and I'm also going to change the color. And once again, I'm going to use my color pick tool, and if you haven't used that very much, watch our tutorial about our color matching system. It is really helpful. And I want this one to be this pink color from this flower up above, so let's just grab that color. We'll say OK. And now you can see that's what's going to be around. That looks good. We'll say OK. But now I want to add the double mat. So what I'm going to do is close my photo box, and I'm going to come here to Shapes. I'm going to add a shape, my square and rectangle. And now I will just position it. I'll just line up my, co my corners like so, and I'll bring it over, just grabbing onto one of the sides. And now I'll grab along the bottom. Just position it so it looks like it's about right. And now I'll use my color matching system again, and I'm going to use the orange out of this flower. Grab that, we'll say OK. And now I will just simply use my layering buttons and just send that layer back. And you can see it here, now it's got a double mat. And now I can go and tweak the colors if I want a little bit. I can also add a drop shadow. And you see that just adds a lot of dimension to that, but you can see how your photo is double matted. If I wanted, I could even add just a slight drop shadow here. And what I would do, because it's really, those are typically really tight, I will maybe adjust this drop shadow so it's just not nearly as big. And you can also use your mouse to just click that up a little bit more, or your arrow keys to just tighten in that shadow. We'll say OK. And you see I just add a little bit of a dimension there, and you can just tweak that and perfect it how you like. Okay, I can see it's not quite lined up just right, so I'll simply click on the mat or my shape and just my arrow keys to nudge that and you just get it lined up then just how the way you want. Now if I wanted to add a coordinating journaling box, I'll simply come over here, add another shape, we'll go for the square rectangle again, 
We'll bring it here and I want it to fit maybe in this area here. And this time, I want the color this time to match this pink. So I use my color match tool. You can see why that's such a popular color. We'll go ahead and grab that pink color. We'll say OK. So now it's that same color that matches up here. And I'll add my mat. And I want my mat to be just a little bit bolder this time. And I'm going to change the color. And I want it to match this orange color, I think. So we'll say OK. We'll see how that looks. OK, now I could have done it in just the reverse, too. So if I'd rather have an orange center and the um, pink mat, I could do that as well. I can add a little drop shadow. And there you go. So you can see it's really easy to create a journaling box that will coordinate with it, your layouts. It's also really easy to double mat a photo. OK, one of the other things that you can do is add stripes or other elements to your page. So let's go ahead and see what our options are. OK, so on this page, we've created the stripes. We have also added a row of dots here. I think that's a cute little finishing touch there. Brings out the color of the flowers. OK, so each one of these stripes is actually a shape. So we've just added, you can see my shape drawer opens over here. So you can just see how easy it is to quickly change to white there. And then all you have to do is just change the opacity. And it creates a different look, giving them more subtle. And I've just copied and pasted the dots to repeat and create a border. You can see it's really easy to then add a stripe or different elements to your page. And the last thing I want to show you is how to tint a photo. So I created this layout here and I brought in a photo in the back and I changed it to black and white, but I would like to give just a little more color to it. So the easiest thing to do would be to add a shape. I'm going to use the square rectangle again and just place it in the corner, drag it so it covers your whole page. And then I am going to change the opacity on it so you can see a little bit through. And I'm going to send it backwards so it's behind all my pictures, my journaling. OK, now we still have our shape selected. I'm going to pick my color tool again. And I'm going to come into the photos and I'm going to pick a blue color. So we'll say OK. And it added all the blue color here. And then I can change the opacity here to give it the different effects that I might.